Hey, Hillary. Thank you so much for joining us today. To kick us off, can you give us a brief intro of who you are and how you use interactive demos at Jungle Scout? Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Natalie. Um, I'm a big Nevada fan, so this is really exciting to uh, get a chance to chat about it. Um, so I'm Hillary. I'm the Senior Director of Marketing at Jungle Scout, and we're really a full stack marketing organization. And we represent marketing for both our enterprise side of the business and our SMB side of the business. Our primary use case for using interactive demos so far has been on the enterprise side of the business. So we use it as almost an alternative for people who maybe aren't ready to go the um, booking a demo in the traditional sense route, but still really want to get a feel for what the product is and what it does and if it can match their use case. That's awesome. Yeah, I feel like especially in that enterprise route when you're like, okay, maybe you're not set up for a free trial or maybe, you know, you're it's going to take a little bit for you to learn all the complexity of the features. Let's let you handhold your way through it and learn on your own versus kind of just jumping right in. Yeah, for sure. That's what we've seen. And we, um, in launching this interactive demo on the website, one of my fears was, is it really going to cannibalize the demo traffic that we're already getting of people like coming in and filling in the forms? And it actually resulted in like, higher quality across the board, which was really nice because you had people who were maybe lower intent actually getting a feel for the complexity of the product, which is, you know, it's an enterprise product, right? It's certainly not for like a brand new user or a small business user or like a less e-commerce savvy user, let's say. Um, so it actually just resulted in, in higher quality and didn't cannibalize our demo form, which was, which was really nice. Yeah, I, I've definitely heard that concern a few times of like, oh, you know, if we put a demo on our website, what about the live demo and the sales team? So love to hear not only did it not drastically reduce or cannibalize it, but also kind of help the sales team a little of like, hey, now you don't have to take those awkward calls where it just clearly isn't a good fit on either side. Yeah, for sure. And we have like a really great follow up set up with our SDR team. When they see that someone has done the demo, they can follow up right away, um, make sure that person is a good fit um, ahead of time, of course, but it really helps prime that discussion a little bit more. And another use case I was excited to talk to you about, I know we talked about this a little before we jumped on, but using interactive demos in webinars, because we've heard a few customers using it either as webinar follow-ups or actually showing the product on the webinar. would love to hear a little more about that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, in particular, our enterprise platform has a lot of data in it. And you know, when you're crunching a lot of data, it can cause things to slow down, which when you're on a webinar, that's like not ideal, right? So um, we want to make sure that the webinar experience is as seamless as possible. So what we do is we record, um, I guess not maybe record is not the right term, but we create these interactive demos of the features or of the data sets that we want to showcase on the webinar ahead of time in Nevadic. And then we click into those instead of actually clicking into the product on the call. That way everything is preloaded. We have like a clear path. There's no um, risk of like clicking into the wrong thing or anything that might distract from the product when we're showing it live on a webinar. And when I mentioned data, that's another really key piece for us in using Nevadic. One of my favorite uh, functions is the edit functionality where you can actually like go in and edit some of the data that is available on your screen. So anything that's like in a text field, you can kind of go through and edit, you can hide certain things. And a lot of the data that we show is data that we don't want to give upfront to such a large audience, right? Like you're gonna be seeing sales estimates for major brands on Amazon. So like you could be looking at sales estimates for like Levi's jeans, for example. And we wouldn't want someone from Levi's to see that on the call and be like, oh, well that's exactly what's inside of Jungle Scout. Um, so it, it almost, we don't wanna like ruin our own punchline with the data that's, that's available. So we're able to go through and mask it. So if something was an exact number, we're able to take it and make it a more like round, more general number, just to avoid giving away anything that might be proprietary or that one of these brands that we work with just wouldn't want other people to see necessarily. Yeah, that's such a good call out for all. I've done those webinars in the past. Then you have to go in, add like a bunch of fake data because you can't obviously show a real customer's account. And then it just ends up taking so much time to like create all the fake names. I've, I've been there just thinking of like John at Apple, like <laughs> having to think of yes. all of them and upload. So I love that uh, use case. I am curious for the webinar demos, do you use any text call outs or more use like the beacon functionality to show where they should click next? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. We just use the beacon functionality just so we can like seamlessly kind of guide ourselves through it. Um, but we definitely use like the other um, text boxes and text callouts in our actual like embedded demo that lives on the site. 
Makes sense. That's what that's what we've seen from other customers, but always curious if they also like if they clone an existing one and just remove the text call outs or even if mm. they follow up after the webinar with one that does include a guided walkthrough. Yeah, we actually include um, for all of our, you know, webinar attendees, people that we meet at trade shows, like everything that's relevant to that enterprise audience, the interactive demo is part of that follow up cadence that our that our sales folks send out, which is which is great because it still gives people that um, like higher level of access and visibility into what the product does. Yeah, that's awesome. If you think about from a webinar perspective, right? So often you just see like slideshows, you might look at the slides, might not, but in this case, it's you see the exact product in a very nice state, and then you get to play around with it yourself afterwards. Yeah, no, it's awesome. It's a very like product like experience, I like to call it. So um, it's very true to what it is. Awesome. Well, it sounds like you have a lot of great experience building out these demos. I'm curious to hear if you had someone new on your team, or maybe just someone new trying Novatic, what would be your number one tip for a Novatic newbie? Yeah, for sure. We're actually about to undergo this right now because we have a new team member who's joining us within the next month and they're going to be owning this aspect of our product marketing. So we are going to be going through the training process and getting someone up to speed. Um, I would say like really mapping out what you want to cover is is really important but i'm not someone that like lives and dies by the storyboard <laughs> i like to like build it out and then just like edit pretty heavily as i go through so i would say like roughly knowing what you want to cover but if you don't feel like you're going to get as much worth out of like doing the work in like a, a you know an offline template or a spreadsheet or something ahead of time just like go out and like build the thing and like try it yourself use the preview function and just edit down as you go. I find that's my my favorite way to to really build things out and, and see how they're they're working and how they're flowing and how they're feeling. Cause sometimes you might see the text pop up and you're like, wow, I was being really text heavy in this area. I gotta scale it back. Nobody's gonna read this, right? Um, and you don't really know that unless you try it um, not live, but like in preview mode. I have done that and I've been hearing a lot from similar customers of like, have an idea of what you wanna show, got that approved, mm -hmm. but you almost can't know how it's going to look until you actually do start building it out. To your point, you might yeah. think, oh, that's an appropriate amount of text. And then I've done it where I'm like, oh, that is way too much text. So I love the idea of like playing a little bit, but also be comfortable with playing around with it and sort of live editing. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, last question for me for today. I know you shared a little bit of results around the sales reps having more qualified calls through the interactive demos. Just curious if there's any other either like qualitative or quantitative feedback from the teams, either using the demos on the website or in the webinars. Yeah, for sure. I would say um, using it on the site has been really effective. It's definitely opened up a new MQL generation channel for us. We pair that with like enrichment data and our like marketing automation and our CRM and like everything kind of like sings together really well, which is, which is great. Um, but in terms of like ROI that we've gotten from it, um, I would say we've probably at this point gotten like at least seven to eight X ROI on our Nevada subscription, which has been pretty amazing. Um, in particular with an enterprise product, you really need to give people some idea of what it is because of course everybody's pricing is dependent on who they are as a customer and what they need from the product and how much data they really want to process. Right. So, um, this gives them the ability to like, see what they could be getting without having to like overcommit to talking to somebody when they may not be ready. So, um, we've definitely seen like pretty strong ROI from it, which has been really exciting. That's awesome. And really appreciate you sharing those stats. I know it's always, whenever someone asks me for ROI, it's like, Oh, I got to do a little bit of digging. So always appreciate taking the time to figure yeah. that out. Yeah, for sure. No, we just went through the budget process. So it was like, oh, should we put Nevada in the budget again for this year? And I was like, yes. <laughs> Perfect. Well, this was really cool, Hillary. Thank you so much for joining us. I love the webinar use case, something that I, I want to start implementing for our own webinars um, and just the advice around like, okay, build something, plan it out, and then really get your hands in and try it. Because I think that's, I'm learning that's the best way for a newbie to start. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Hillary. Yeah, thank you.